Hey, my name's Andrea Rowan and I'm one of the senior leaders here at Coastal Community Church. I'm really excited to bring you some news that we're starting a new series called Grow. Here at Coastal, we believe that whether we are 8 or 80, we believe that we need to commit to being lifelong learners. None of us have got it all together. None of us have fully arrived. And Paul in the book of Philippians puts it beautifully like this. Not that I have already been made perfect. We are all on a journey. We are all growing in God. And here at Coastal Community Church, we are committed to being lifelong learners because we know that that is how we grow best. By realising that there's always more to learn about ourselves, God and others, we can grow well in our relationship with God and achieve great character. We need to know Jesus, we need to grow in Jesus and we need to then go and share Jesus with others. So what is wisdom? The Bible tells us that apart from a relationship with God, wisdom is the most important thing that we can ever achieve. Proverbs 4, 7 puts it like this. The beginning of wisdom is get wisdom, skillful and godly wisdom. For skillful and godly wisdom is the principal thing. And with all that you've gotten, get understanding, get discernment, comprehension and interpretation. Getting wisdom will direct our conversations. It will show us when to speak and when not to speak. Getting wisdom will direct our right decisions in life and it will show us when and what advice we need to give and when we need to do so. Wisdom is different to knowledge. I once heard someone say this, knowledge is knowing that a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is knowing that you wouldn't put a tomato in a fruit salad. You see, I have known many people with ologies after their name and letters in front of their name and there is nothing wrong with gaining knowledge, we need it. But it is, and it is helpful for so many different things. But it doesn't matter how much knowledge we gain, we can still lack wisdom. So how do we get wisdom? This morning I want to share with you three simple keys on how to get wisdom. We all want more wisdom, right? There's multi-million pound businesses on life coaching, finding solutions, getting the right wisdom on this and that. It's a multi-million pound industry. But God is very clear. Number one, we get wisdom by getting a heavenly perspective. Proverbs 9.10 says this, the reverent and worshipful, worshipful fear of the Lord is the beginning, the chief and choice part of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is insight and understanding. You see, we get wisdom by fearing the Lord. What does that mean? Knowing and understanding that I might in myself have some great ideas but actually God knows best for every area of my life if I'm just willing to surrender those ideas to him. Getting a heavenly perspective means that we're not led by our wills, but we're led by his will. Getting a heavenly perspective means that we don't rush ahead, but we wait and seek what God has to say on the subject. Getting a heavenly perspective means that we surrender our pride in thinking that we know best and surrender to a greater and more truthful perspective, which will ultimately have God's best interests and our best interests, not only for us, but for others as well. So get a heavenly perspective. Seek God in all that you do, in all your major decisions, what does God say on the subject? Because God really truly knows best and he has big shoulders. We can seek him, we can know him, we can see what God has to say on the subject of whatever situation we're in today. 
maybe for you right now you've been taking the steering wheel of your life when you know that you need to actually let God be in the driving seat again. Maybe for you, you need to stop doing so much in your own strength and going at full pelt. And maybe God is calling you to change gears, to go into a lower gear and start doing things more out of God's rest so that you can travel with greater wisdom, persistence and with greater longevity. Whatever it is for you today, allow yourself to let go and lean into God with all that you are and all the decisions that you have to make. Allow God to take hold of the steering wheel of your life. Get his perspective on it. Allow God to shake you and reposition you so that you are positioned well in line with God's perspective on all things going forward. If that's you today, it's time to get out of the driving seat and position yourself as God's passenger for the next season, seeking his wisdom as you go ahead in all things. He knows best, you can trust him. So number one, we get wisdom by getting a heavenly perspective. Number two, we get wisdom by asking for it specifically. You know, the beautiful thing about God's wisdom is that if we ask for it, he will give it. James 1.5 puts it like this, like this. If any of you is deficient in wisdom, let him ask of the giving God who gives to everyone liberally and ungrudgingly without reproaching or fault finding and it will be given to him. This means that any of us can ask God for God's wisdom on the subject. No issue is too big or too small for God. And this word without fault finding means it's absolutely God's pleasure to give you wisdom on a particular subject, whatever your situation. If you ask God for wisdom on a particular subject, he's not going to come with judgment or condemnation, but insight and the best plan for your life. He won't come with a big stick waving it around. He will come with love and compassion. He just requires that we ask for it specifically. So we have to ask. We have to spend time with God and ask for it and get his knowledge on the subject. So number two, ask for it specifically. Seek wise counsel from others. There's a great scripture that I hold fast to. Proverbs 15, 22. Where there is no counsel, purposes are frustrated, but with many counsellors, they are accomplished. Here at Coastal, we have much wide counsel, not only from our denomination, but also relationships of wisdom and accountability that we've built up and treasured over the years. You see, we're definitely not meant to do life alone. We are designed to do life together. We're called to do life with many counsellors, not people with many different opinions that we're gonna sway this way or that way according to how the wind blows, but many counsellors. People who have been positioned by God with godly wisdom over our, in our lives. That's why, the ch that's why the church is God's perfect plan for salvation, discipleship, growth and wisdom for people to know how to live their lives well. If you're not already in a connect group, I would really suggest that you get involved in one so that you can grow well in God, so that you can know Jesus, grow in Jesus and then go out and tell people about Jesus. You can seek wisdom from those within your connect group and, within, and your connect group leaders. And you can grow well in your relationship with God and others. Number three, we can get wisdom by receiving God's word. Notice I didn't say we just get wisdom by reading God's word. Do you know we can read God's word 
but we can still end up making really bad and unhelpful decisions. The point I'm trying to make here is that not only do we need to read about what God is saying about our situation, but we also need to receive it in our heart and then act on it. Reading God's word is very different to receiving it and acting on it. The two, reading and receiving, are very different things. Psalm 19.7 puts it like this. The law of the Lord is perfect, restoring the whole person. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. You see, when we read God word, God's word and take it in and apply it to our particular circumstances or our situation and our lives, there can be a restoration and a healing that comes to our situation restoring the whole person. We have put God into the middle of our situation and started to follow his ways on it. So therefore there is also going to be a testimony that comes with it, with it as we've lent into God and trusted in his amazing guidance for our lives. Therefore it's so important to have God Jesus at the centre of our lives, directing us and leading us so that we lean in and trust his guidance and trust his direction for our lives. Jesus knows best. You know, right now you might be struggling with a difficult situation in your life, a situation that feels like unanswered prayer or a situation where you might naturally be described as being stuck between a rock and a hard place. But I want to encourage you that God knows your situation completely. Not only does he know it, but he has some great wisdom on it. Habakkuk 3.17 puts it like this. Though the fig tree does not blossom and there is no fruit on the vines, though the product of the olive fails and the fields yield no food, though the flock is cut off from the fold and there are no cattle in the stall, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will exult in the victorious God of my salvation. You know, in situations right now, you might be facing a situation that just really feels hopeless. But God is inviting us to come up higher and get his perspective on it. To really receive his word on the subject. To thank him, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Despite what this situation look, look, looks like, though it looks like a fig tree that hasn't blossomed, though it looks like a vine without any fruit, without any fruit, and though it looks like the olive a tree has failed and there's no product on it, yet I will praise God. And this scripture is wonderfully encouraging us that despite the circumstances or situation that we find ourselves in, look up and get God's divine perspective. Although it might feel like you're stuck between a rock and a hard place, we can look up and praise God. And that's when the release comes. I want to encourage you in situations that look difficult at this time, God is inviting you to come up higher and see it from his perspective. perspective. Thank him for what he's done in the past. Thank him for who he is and thank him that he holds you securely. All we have to do is lean in and trust in the one who holds you, the one who knows you and the one who goes before you. So how do we get wisdom? If you need wisdom today, get a heavenly perspective. If you need wisdom today, ask for it specifically. And if you need wisdom today, read it and receive God's word. 
If you have been watching our message today and you like to, you'd like to know more about Jesus, hop onto our website www.coastalcommunitychurch.org.uk where you can freely chat to someone more about getting to know more about Jesus, going to an Alpha course, maybe learning more about who Jesus is and how you can get into a relationship with God. I want to encourage you today, if you are someone maybe who has been watching this message and you know that you need to make the next step with God, I'm just going to pray this simple prayer with you. Dear Jesus, forgive me for my sin. Forgive me for the direction that I've been going. I want to put my life and my ways into your hands. I want to trust you with your godly wisdom and I want to trust you that you have the best way and you know the best way I need to go. I want to commit my life to following you and fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus name, Amen. If you pray that prayer today, we would love to hear from you, encourage you in your walk with God and also to provide you with some helpful materials. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.